What up, that side friend? This is Mitty Man. Coming back at you again from Walker's Music. With, uh, not just say it necessary to say a word for the day, but, uh, Mitty Man decided to do a study tonight. And, like I said, because of the weather, we have not been able to have Bible study for the last two occasions. And so, as promised, that I was going to be dealing with the book of Daniel. And I don't like to go back on my promise if I can help it. And uh, so, therefore, I'm going to do a, a brief study here tonight on on dealing with some of the images and the dreams that King Nebuchadnezzar has had as well as Daniel. I've already dis discussed some things during the Bible study, and we want to give God the glory and give him all the honor and praise. And we thank God for everybody, each and every one of you, all your cyber friends, you know who you are. But now, what did a man want to do tonight? I want to go, I want to deal basically with the book of Daniel's, Daniel chapter 7. And uh, what I'm going to try to show is that the, 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 the dream that Daniel had of the world kingdoms, how diverse it was from and different it was from the king Nebuchadnezzar. Now we know and we've already studied that Nebuchadnezzar had the dream of the great image of a man head of gold, arms, and, uh, and chest of silver, and then the, the midsection of brass, and the arms of legs, and then the, the feet of iron and clay mixed up together. We know that those was, and we uh, know that Daniel interpreted that from God, that it was the, the world kingdom, Babylon being the head of gold, uh, Babylon being the head of gold, and that in the in the in the, in the, uh, the Persian the Median Persian Empire, which consists of modern day Iran, was the the arms of uh, of silver chest, and then the midsection was brass, which represented Alexander the Great in the Greek Empire, and the irons the the leg of iron was the Roman Empire, and then we know and we've uh, attested that the feet of iron and clay is the last world kingdom that will be. It's a mixture of iron and clay, meaning that it will be partly of the last kingdom, which was the Roman Empire, mixed with weaker with, with weaker nations or kingdoms, which represented by the clay. That kingdom is, quote unquote, we are right on the verge of it. We're at the very beginning of it. It's not coming to fruition yet, but it's fast on the way, fast approaching. We're going to call that the last kingdom, and we'll call that the kingdom of the Antichrist, the last world kingdom that will be. But that was what, that was uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream. But now Daniel had another dream, and Daniel dreamed of these kingdoms in a, in a, in a, in a different fashion. He didn't dream it as a, in the image of a, of a man. But God always used beasts to represent kingdoms and kings, and that's the way it is throughout all of the Bible. And I noticed that Daniel, he his dream was of a, a lion with wings and a bear with ribs and a leopard with four heads and wings and then a terrible beast that was diverse from all the rest of them. So now you see Daniel's interpretation and we look at it and from the very beginning and we can say that Okay, well, Daniel saw the same thing that Nebuchadnezzar saw. But I tend to differ, people. I tend to differ. Now, y'all bear with me now. Look, most of this is just, this is many man's. This is my take on what I'm, what I'm feeling in my spirit. Now, I can't prove all this scripturally. And neither am I I'm trying to go back and trying to rewrite the Bible. No, I'm not. I dare not do that. No. I'm saying this is what I feel that's going on. This is what I believe that perhaps this could this just this just an opinion. And I want everybody to know that this this is just my opinion of what I see going on here. This is what I believe. I believe that Daniel, that God gave Daniel a double vision. That's what I believe. Now let me explain what I mean. Meaning that. Not only did God give Daniel the interpretation of that time, but I think he also gave Daniel the interpretation of future time as well. 
Because remember now, he told Daniel to close up the book and seal it up until the end. Now, we know the book of Revelation is really just a continuation of the book of Daniel. We, we, we can concur to that because it's the same author. The author is God. He's just using two different secretaries. One was Daniel. The other one was Apostle John. Now, let me explain why I say that Daniel perhaps had a double vision. Now, you listen to me. I said this is me. This is just what I'm feeling, people. And I just want to share it just to give everybody something to think about. That's all. We know what the Bible is right automatically. We're not discussing. That's not even up for discussion. We're not trying to prove the Bible wrong. Never. The Bible is right. This is just something else that I observe. Now, if we observe Nebuchadnezzar's statue of that man, the head of gold was him, Babylon. Okay. The chest and arm was silver, which represented the modern-day Iran, the Persian, Medo-Persian Empire. Then Alexander the Great with the brass and the Greek. The iron's leg was the Roman. Now, in the feet of iron and clay was that last world kingdom that is to come. Now, look at something. Now, look at Daniel. Look at Daniel's dream. Daniel had the dream of the lion with wings, eagle's wings. Then a bear with three ribs in his mouth. Then a leopard with four wings and four heads. And then a terrible beast that was diverse from the rest. Now, a lot of us said that that was still the lion represented Babylon, which I'm not arguing with that because I believe God gave Daniel a double vision. The lion did represent Babylon, I believe, at that time. And the wings meant when it was broken off, I believe that was the time when, you know, he humbled Nebuchadnezzar and made him eat and became a beast in the field and to, to make him repent and humble himself. I believe that. And the bear with the three real represented at that particular time was the Medo-Persian and they meant that much blood was shed in that during that time and you remember the Iranian the Medes and the Persian Empire was when Esther saved her people the total annihilate the Haman had uh, ordered the total annihilation of the people of the Jews but it was Esther stopped that this was during that Medo-Persian Empire people remember that that's the bear now that last and terrible beast that was diverse, what Daniel saw, we could recognize and we could say that was the Roman Empire because it was ruthless. It, that the Romans were very ruthless in their dealing. Now, we're not arguing that that was exactly what it was and what it is. We're not arguing that. But this is what I want you oh, Excuse me. This is what I want everybody to to this. This, just imagine this with me, man, just a little bit. This is just me, man's feeling. This is what I believe that God gave Daniel a double vision for end times as well. Those beasts not only recognize those past kingdoms, but the kingdoms that are yet present in this very day we are living in. Now, let me explain the reason why I said that. I got some pictures I'm going to show. I got some things that I want to read. That I'm going to share to, to, to just let y'all know and enlighten you the reason why I am speaking of in this fashion. Now, the lion. Let's come to modern day. This is what I believe. Who, who what nation, what nation on the planet that's in our modern day right now that was a, had the lion as the mascot, or I should say this, the emblem. Just like, what, Britain, Great Britain. All right, the lion that Daniel saw, it had eagle's wing. The eagle wing were plucked. Okay, what nation came out of Great Britain? Yes, the United States, represented by what? The eagle's wing. Remember, our national symbol is an eagle. Now, it said those wings were broken and stood up, it received a man's heart. We got another another symbol that rec we recognize in the in the United States as well, and I give all credit to Irvin Baxter for pointing this out to everybody. Uncle Sam, that's a man. Yeah, all come out of Great Britain, the lion. Now, what nation is represented by the bear? Russia. See what I mean? The Russian bear 
Understand? Russia, especially communist Russia, was ruthless. Much blood was shed. That's the battle with the three reals. This just me, the man. This just the thought that I'm getting. Okay. And the, the last beast that Daniel saw was very terrible. It was a mixture of all of it. The reason why Midi Man is so stuck on this is the last world kingdom is because of the fact that in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, we saw the Roman Empire represented by the what? Legs. You don't see nothing that represents the Roman Empire other than that terrible beast in Daniel's dream. Four beasts. But in, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, you had the head, the arms, the waistline, the legs, and the feet. But in Daniel's vision, you only got four beasts. You see why I mean I believe this is the end time? That there was a double vision that God was giving Daniel. It was a double vision. I'm going to still say why I believe that. And listen to people. I say I believe this. This is what I feel that. I could be wrong. But it's just an observation. That's all I'm just giving you something for everybody to think about. Now, Daniel saw the lion with the wing. Eagle's wing, which I believe Great Britain, United States. I believe that. Okay, the Russian bear, he saw the bear with the real. I believe that's Russia. And that last beast, that terrible beast, which is a mixture of all of it. That's the mixture of all the world kingdom. What? Because the whole world is going to give homage to the beast, the Antichrist. He, the whole world is going to give their homage to them, those that apply. Not everybody's going to give their homage to the beast. Believe it now. Because I, I know the Jews are not. The Jews are going to be one people that will not going to go with this Antichrist. And I don't believe in I, if, 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 if Christians still be here because we got people that don't believe that the church is going to be here during that time. We got some that believe that. Well, if the church if the church happened to be here, well, I know the church is not going to go along if they the real church. And now we got a false church. But the real blood bought church of Jesus Christ is not going to follow no Antichrist. So we're going to have two that's going to be against this man of sin that's soon to come. That's going to be the Jews and the church. If the church be here. Now, many man got to go back and tell y'all why I believe that. Remember now, y'all, I said I believe this. This is what been put on my heart. I could be wrong, but this is just something that I see. It's a, it's a parallelism in there somewhere. And it and it, it, it coincides with but Daniel's dream and Nebuchadnezzar's dream coincide. But Daniel's dream goes beyond Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar saw the kingdoms of the world from a man's point of view. But God showed Daniel the kingdoms of the world from his eyesight, from his point of view. And that last terrible beast being the Antichrist in his system, in his world. Now, I pulled up some, I pulled up some, uh, some images that I wanted to uh, pull up. I hope I can get them up here. There's a map of the. I wanted to get that map, but first of all, let me let me uh, let me go back to. Let's see here. All right, we want to go back to where when 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 Daniel. If we read the book of Daniel, let me get my Bible. And we read the book of Daniel. In chapter 7, we're going to see what I have up here on the map. What Daniel was dreaming in his dream. Now, in book, I think it's Daniel 7. Daniel 7. Let me see. I got to get it. All right. I should have bookmarked it before I started, but that's all right. Daniel 7. Let us read. Just a few scriptures, just to point out this region of the map right here. I want to point out the region of the map right there. Now, it says, In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the psalm of the matter. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. Okay, this great sea that Daniel was talking about is this sea right here, the Mediterranean. This the sea that is always called the great sea if you ever study the Bible. This is the great sea. That's the sea that Daniel saw. Now, and the four winds was on that sea, 
Well, that's it. He saw that. Now, a lot of them said that could be the Holy Spirit uh, moving upon the regions of that sea, blowing to and fro. That's what they are saying. But let's just say we're going to represent north, south, east, and west. Let's just put that for that. Now, and four great beasts came, this in verse 3. Y'all bear with me, this might be a long video tonight. It said, four beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another, meaning different. From one, the one was diverse from the former. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. See, that's why I said United States and Great Britain. Thanks to Brother Irvin Baxter. And I beheld till the wings there were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth, and made stand upon the feet as a man. And a man's heart was given to it. Remember, we got another symbol and an emblem for the United States, Uncle Sam. He's a man. And behold, another beast, a second like a bear. And it raised up on its one side, meaning one side was stronger than the other. And we know the Iranians was stronger than the Medes. And it had three ribs in the mouth. We done told you that it devoured much flesh. And after this I beheld a little another like a leopard, which had upon the back of its four wings of a fowl. And the beast and the four heads and the dominion was given to it. Now we know that that represented the Alexander the Great in the Greek, the Greek Empire. And them four heads were those four generals that the empire went to after the death of Alexander the Great. But now I want you to remember something. <clears throat> now we look in future tense. <clears throat> Let's look at where Greece is located. There's Greece on the map. Right on the Mediterranean Sea. There's Athens. And that, that's, the whole, uh, that's the whole country of Greece. And look at what Greece is connected to. Ain't that Germany, Poland, all of these here, Ukraine, all these, Romania, all these here, particularly Italy, which is, well, who we'll come, we'll come out of Italy? Rome, France, all them nations are joined together with that, including Germany. I, I said that for a reason, that I believe that these nations all mean what Daniel saw were end time kingdoms or where we are living at right now. Now, and he said, after this, I saw the night vision, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, and strong, exceedingly. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. See, this is why I say that, that Daniel did not see the same thing that Nebuchadnezzar saw. Which was Nebuchadnezzar, the iron of the lead, was the Roman Empire. But this beast is diverse. He not only was set, see, remember, the Roman Empire, it sets on ten hills. But this is not what Daniel was talking about. With this beast was diverse from the other beast, it grinded all the rest of them, it devoured. I believe, this just me the man, please, please people listen to what I said. I didn't say the Bible said that this is what I'm looking at, because I'm looking at Daniel having a double vision. I believe God, I believe me the man, not the Bible. Many men believe that God gave Daniel a double vision. He not only gave Daniel the vision of the time that he was in, but he showed him the future. Because remember, the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation is one book in my opinion. It, same author, different secretary. Now, if you look at the great sea, I just wanted to point it out. This terrible beast, I believe, is that last world kingdom, which the Antichrist himself will rule, that little horn that's going to come up within this kingdom. Now, we can put our Bible away for right now. And I just want everybody to just bear with me, the man, for just a few more seconds. Now, that a great sea. Now, I want you to look at all these here surrounding countries that's, that borders the Mediterranean Sea. There's Israel right there. Small little nation, but there it is right there. There's Syria. There's Turkey. There's Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, Algeria. Morocco, Spain, France, Italy, as well as Greece. All those nations, all of them borders on the Great Sea, the Mediterranean Sea. That's biblically proof. The Bible, Daniel, the prophet, they knew 
exactly what they was talking about. All of them nations had direct and have been or either going to be got direct percussion, repercussion against the nation of Israel. The only country that does not border them that was once over that region is the country of Iran, the medo Persian. If you look at Iran, Iran is way over here. It does not border the Red Sea, but remember when they was in power, they were they was over the land of Palestine and everything. So that therefore you could they was included in the one of the Great Sea. Now I want to show one more thing here. I want to show some pictures of the 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 there's a uh, Nebuchadnezzar's image and that Iraq which represent Christ. Let's see, can we get a big image of that? Let's see, can we get a big image of that? Well, now that that was all uh, Nebuchadnezzar. That's not a really a good, a good picture of it, but that's about the best we can do. But this rock being the kingdom of of Christ, Christ's coming kingdom rule one thousand year reign on this earth to set up His kingdom forever. That's the rock that was hewed out of the mountain without hands. It's going to crush the world kingdom to smithereen. But now let's look at Daniel's vision of his beast. Now you see, look at that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see, can I? All right. There's the lion with the eagle's wing. There's the bear with the three ribs in his mouth, as you can see that. There's the leopard back there with the four heads, which represent those four generals of Alexander. And the wings represented the speed at which Alexander overtook the whole world. He did it so quickly. And this beast here, that's the last world kingdom. Those are Daniel's vision, people. Those are Daniel's vision of what I think Daniel's, God gave Daniel. The, God gave Daniel not only what was modern in his time of the kingdoms of the world like Babylon, the Medes and the Persians that came after them, as well as Alexander the Great and the Romans Empire, and as well as he told them about the feet and the toes. Not only did God give Daniel that, God gave Daniel supervision to see in our day, in which we could safely say, now I'm not saying that this, please people, don't, I'm not saying this is exact. This is just something that I feel in my heart from listening to various Bible teachers and Everything makes a lot of sense because we know there's only so many countries. Okay, you, I think it's China, Russia, the UK, United States that got veto power in the UN. They can overrule anyone. And if you look at those nations, Russia, the UK, the United States, for instance, as well as Germany, if you look at it and then look at this map here, Germany being a part of this here whole region, that could easily represent that leopard. And they are the one that got veto power in the UN, along with Russia and the UK and the United States. Now let's look at the old beasts again. The UK being the lion, because that was their mascot. That was the emblem of that country, the lion. The United States, the eagle. That's the eagle wing broken off from Britain. And you know, we, we, we got, it's written in history that we come from the, uh, America were born out of Great Britain. The, we fought a whole revolutionary war, 1776. We became an independent nation, separate from Great Britain. Okay, Russia, known as the bear. There it is right here. Russia, known as the bear. That, that what uh, Daniel, Daniel saw. And then here we go, Germany along with Greece and the rest of them, Alexander the Great in that region, that's the leopard. Now, if we look at it, Italy is also a part of this same thing. Remember it said the beast will be a mixture. It's terrible, but it's going to crush and subdue everything. This is what the Antichrist does. He causes all, both small and great, to worship the image of the beast. See, this is that domination fact. This is why I say that that last beast is terrible. It wasn't, what Daniel saw wasn't just Rome, but it was a revised Roman Empire. A mixture of all the kingdoms. And, it went, and we, could, we could safely say that those ten kings, more than likely, are ten Arab nations. And please, people, remember I said ten Arab nations. All surrounding this here Mediterranean Sea, Libya, Egypt. 
all of these nation people are totally, are, are heavily, nothing but uh, Islamic, Arabic, Libya, Egypt, Turkey, um, Algeria. I mean, if you look at Syria, Iraq, Iran, let's look at it. Those are the ones that is going to cause the havoc in the end days. And they are the ones that are going to form the alliance. If we go back to, if we go back, I think to Psalm, if you go back to Psalm 83, I think that's the one of the, the one of the main ones we talk about. But Ezekiel 38 and 39, these nations all comes against the little bit of Israel. But we already know what's going to happen to that. God going to stop that. So people, I just had to come and give y'all that much of what I feel that's going to happen. And that's what I believe that God was showing Daniel when he showed him the vision. He gave him a double vision. I believe he gave him a vision for the current time as well as future time. Because we remember he told Daniel, seal up the book until the time of the end. You will sleep. You will sleep with your father. But seal it up until the time of the end. So with that being said, people, it's, I mean, I was just giving you what I felt in my heart. This is what I see. And it's soon coming. We right at the door. Everything is being set up. I'm quite sure some of you heard the State of the Union uh, address on the other, other evening. People, look at the time, signs of the time. Look at the weather pattern. Look at everything that Jesus said. Look at the Mount Olivet discourse. Everything that Jesus said is in line. It's in line. And if you can just look and read a map, you can see it all from the great sea. Remember, the great sea always reading the Mediterranean. Read Psalm 83, Ezekiel 38 and 39. Study it. Ask the Holy Spirit to open your eyes and your understanding. We all are living in some great times here, people. I feel that I, I'm so excited because I know that God's kingdom, Jesus, is soon to return. I don't know when. But I know it's at the door. Jesus is soon to return. We got a few more things that got to happen and transpire. And I tell everybody, watch this section of the world right here. Watch, watch that section of the world. Watch Israel. In other words, here's a whole map of the globe. Watch this little area right there. That's the, I call that the apple of God's eye. That's Israel. Watch that. Watch that portion of the world. Look out for this here peace, this uh, peace agreement that's going to be made with the Arab and the Jew. Please, please keep your eye out for that, as well as for Temple Mount. In other words, on Mount Moriah there, that temple there, the Dome of the Rock, everything is going to have to be a Jewish temple. The Solomon, Solomon Temple is going to have to be rebuilt. Keep your eyes and ears open for that as well. Also, people, we got two major wars that we can look forward to. Psalm 83 tells us, Ezekiel 38 and 39. We got two major conflicts, I believe, that got to happen according to the Bible before Armageddon. So, and it's going to be a lot of bloodshed. A lot of people going to lose their lives. I don't know how all that going to take place, but the Bible do say it's going to happen. And I don't believe it's too far away. So, people, we need to get our business fixed. We need to set our houses in order. We need to stop worrying about this world and about what. You know, it's no time now to be worrying about gold and silver. It's time now to be put your, your mind on your soul, salvation, and turning your life over to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. People, the invitation is the best part of any church service. I always will say that. If you don't have your business fixed up with Christ, it behooves you to do so now. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sin. You need to get forgiveness because when this thing, grace is going to be over after a while. So I would, I would move now while the getting is good. Grace is soon going to be over and we're going to go into judgment. So people, if you haven't accepted Christ as your personal Savior, I would advise you to do so. And I mean do it in a hurry. It is not that hard, people. It's just confess that you've been wrong and that you need a Savior. Ask Jesus to come into your heart, repent of your sins, take up your cross, and follow him. That's all you got to do. This is Mini Man.
saying, I hope that I'll be able to do the Bible study on tomorrow night. God willing, I, I will. I'm hoping and I'm praying to be able to do so. And I'm hoping that I would have all the cyber friends to be back with me, brother JT, sister Lady D, if y'all y'all are your main two that be that calls in. I got others that be on the web that listen by the way of the web. Like Bonnie, if she listened to the be on the web. And I got a couple of others that I think listen to on the web. So we just saying, we hoping and we pray that we be able to go back and get back on the Bible study on tomorrow night. Now, I think some of the weather... Maybe the bad of it is by going for this here, this wave anyhow. So with that being said, this middle man saying, whatever you get, whatever you get into. If God is not in it, the best you come out of this. The middle man saying, peace and good night.